The old Welsh town of Llantwyd Major is located along the coast in the county of the Vale of Glamorgan. Today, this quaint town near the coast is enriched in history and religious significance. With its past connected to so many famous names, such as St David and St Patrick, and even Emperor Claudius and Caesar, Llantwyd Major offers a plethora of legends and tales. Going way back to the Celtic and Roman times, Llantwyd Major was occupied by the Filiers. Found all around South Wales, the Silures were an organised group of people who were made up of many different tribes. They fought against the Romans over many decades and for a long time this prevented the Romans from occupying this part of South Wales. Due to this major resistance, it took the Romans a lot longer to settle here in comparison to other parts of the UK. One of the most famous and noteworthy leaders was Caraticus. Caraticus was born near St Donat's, which is just a few miles from Llantwit Major. He and his brother were fierce leaders in the campaign for the resistance of the Romans. In particular, they resisted invasions from the Emperor Claudius in 43 AD. However, some historians think that the Silius resistance goes back even further and potentially to the reign of Julius Caesar in 55 BC. Going back to Caraticus, eventually after about seven years of resistance, he was handed over to the Romans. In 51 AD, Caraticus was finally defeated in battle and handed to the governor Astoria Scapula. Not long after this, the Roman settlers finally began to occupy Llantwit and its surrounding areas. Due to its natural shelter for ships, the Valley of Colhue at Llantwit Major was a prime and desirable spot for the Romans to use. It also made easy access to other Roman ports such as Porthcarry Park and Coldnap which are both found in Barry. Evidence of Roman occupation can still be found today at a field called Caer Mead, which is just outside the town centre. Over a hundred years ago, in 1887, the Roman villa of Caer Mead was unearthed by an archaeologist named John Storey. Between 1938 and 1939, the site was excavated, and then again in 1971. During the 1971 excavation, three sets of remains were unearthed. Archaeologists seem to be in an agreement that Llantwit's temple and early Christian connection dates back to the late Roman period. According to the legend, Claudia, the supposed daughter of Caraticus, was converted to Christianity and established the first Christian church of Llantwit Major. The first Christian school was said to be set up around 63 to 66 AD. What was once a site of paganism became a beacon of Christian teachings and Christian scholarships. As the area of Llantwit Major grew in popularity for its Christian teachings, many monasteries were constructed. Consequently, it attracted around 2,000 converts just to this area alone. Ilted, who the town is named after, came to the area in the last few decades of 500 AD. And it was he who developed the town's reputation for being learned in Christian teachings. Along Orkney Brook, Ilted founded the first monastery, which is not quite in the same location as the current church that stands today. 
Llanillid quickly gained a national and international reputation for being highly learned in the teachings of Christianity. Included in the people attracted to this area were St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, St. David, the patron saint of Wales, and the famous Welsh bard Taliesin. Once again, the church you see today is not the original church. According to records, much of the establishments and original buildings were destroyed by Viking invaders in 987 AD. What was left of the monasteries was eventually shut down. This was due to King Henry VIII's reign, whose dissolution of the monasteries came into force in 1539. The Church of Echtet that we see today is not the original, but its own history and construction dates back to the Norman period after the invasion of the Vikings. Today in modern times, Llantwit has its own Llantwit Major History Society. On their website, they have helpfully provided a couple of historical routes that will take you to all the significant sites and landmarks that Llantwit has to offer. One of the most notable places in Llantwit to have ghostly tales is Old Place. Built in 1596 during the Elizabethan era by a man named Griffith Williams, Old Place was once owned by the Van family. Today in modern times, the mansion has gone to rack and ruin, but back in the Tudor times, however, it was a regal building and is also known as Llantwit Castle. The Van family were regularly involved in scandals. For instance, in 1527, Thomas Van was found guilty of murder, but he pleaded innocent. He was later pardoned of his apparent crime and narrowly avoided execution. A few decades later, in 1598, two more members of the Van family were involved in a scandal. Sir Edward and Sir Edmund were found guilty of enticing violence at St. Ilted Church. As a consequence to their actions, both were heavily fined a thousand pounds each, which in today's money is roughly around 16,000 pounds. In this now abandoned mansion, according to some records, there is a supposed ghost nicknamed the Dutch ghost that haunts here. Some say he is a Dutch sailor who perished at sea on the rocks near Llantwit Beach. Others, however, have suggested that because the name Van is similar to the Dutch prefix Van, the spectre has been nicknamed the Dutch Ghost. However, some think it's one of the Van family, a Van family member who was never left the home. Boverton is a suburb of Llantwit Major and has great connections to the Elizabethan era. Boverton Place, or Boverton Castle, was established by a man named Robert Fitzhamon. It was re-established in the 1590s by Roger Says, who at the time was the Attorney General. The home remained in the family up until Jane Says, who was the last remaining heiress of the property. Jane married Robert Jones of Fondman, who sold the estate and eventually it went into rack and ruin. According to one account, the property is linked to the Earl of Gloucester. His daughter, who goes by many names, supposedly retired to Boverton Castle after her divorce to King John. In the 19th century, the building was demolished and then, at some point, renovated. During this demolition, according to some accounts, Several workmen claim to have seen a ghostly figure dressed in black. One source suggests that this ghostly spectre could be the daughter of the Earl of Gloucester. Whoever she is, she has been nicknamed the Black Lady of Boverton. And there we have it, a brief dive into the rich history of Llantwit Major, a town especially known for its religious significance. 
thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch another story from Tales from Wales and the Great Beyond. <laughs>